that would be like coming up to me and saying, uh, hey, Caleb, did any of your students there at Faulkner, have they ever talked to this person? I don't know. What's that person's name? Well, we don't know what the name is. Well, then how am I supposed to know whether or not the student talked to him or not, genius? That's what's going on here with Mo Brooks. They're saying, did any of your staff talk to these people? And Mo Brooks is saying, I don't know who these people are. So I couldn't possibly tell you if some random person on my staff talked to them. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Mo Brooks was one of the people that actually spoke at the rally, I believe directly before President Trump did on January 6th. Now, this happened actually simultaneously. In fact, the president's speech wasn't even over when the first people broke into the Capitol. So these two groups are completely unconnected. People have tried really hard to connect them and make them seem as though they're the same people, but they're not. And that confusion is actually kind of where this story stems from. So you'll see here, this is a headline from Rolling Stone. I know, why is Rolling Stone paying attention to this and not like interviewing, I don't know, one of the Eagles or Stevie Nicks or something like that? I have no idea. I have no idea why they're involved in this. It seems a bit bizarre to me. But this is Rolling Stone and their headline, exclusive January 6th protest organizers say they participated in dozens of planning meetings with members of Congress and White House staff. Two sources communicating with White House investigators and detailed a, uh, detailed a stunning series of allegations to Rolling Stone, including a promise of a, quote, blanket pardon from the Oval Office. So a couple things here. First of all, you should know that when it says members of Congress, Mo Brooks is one of the ones listed in here, and so this affects him, but he's not the one that the allegation of a blanket pardon is going against. We'll get into that in a second. But the point here is, on its surface, looks pretty bad, right? Because by reading that headline and the little blurb directly under it, by reading that information, you would think what's going on here is it saying, oh, people breaking into the Capitol was planned. And the people that did so, they were having meetings with some members of Congress and they were given a promise of a pardon if they did this. Here's the problem with that, though. You're conflating two groups that were never together. You're conflating people that organized the protest and the rally that Mo Brooks did speak at and people that, completely unaffiliated, broke into the, the Capitol building. Now, again, I'm not trying to run cover for these people. I said, as it was happening, that these people were probably Trump supporters just based on some of the images and some of the things that we were seeing as the story unfolded. And so I'm not trying to run cover for them or say like, you know, those aren't people that were actually with the Trump. No, I'm not saying that. These people were legitimate Trump supporters that were upset about the election. There may have been some plants in there. I don't know. We'll have to, you know, if an investigation ever comes out about that, we may know a little bit more about that. But the point is there were legitimate Trump supporters in that group, but they are different Trump supporters than the ones that were actually at this rally. And what that headline is doing is it's trying to craft an idea in your head that Mo Brooks and other members of Congress were actually behind this thing and actually wanted people to break into the Capitol. But if you actually read this article, that's not what it's alleging. And the people at Rolling Stone know it. You see, the thing is, they want you to just read the headline and move on. That's why they crafted the headline in the way that they did. I'm a writer. And you can tell by looking at this thing, they specifically wrote it in such a way to give the wrong impression. They wanted you to think that the people smashing windows and putting their foot up on Nancy Pelosi's desk and stealing podiums and flags and that kind of thing, that that was something that was organized by members of Congress like Mo Brooks. But if you actually spent more than eight seconds, which by the way is the average amount of time that the average American spends reading a news story before posting, sharing, liking, that kind of thing. If you spent more time than that and actually read the contents of the article, you'll see that it's essentially a massive nothing burger. The headline is, is by far the part that makes it look the worst, but when you actually read some of the stuff being reported in there, you see that it's, it's really not doing that. And by the way, I think that this is even more true because Rolling Stone hid this behind the subscription wall. 
So in other words, unless you are an actual subscriber to Rolling Stone, you can't read the article at all. You can see the headline, you can see it shared on social media, but you can't actually read the article. And so even more than the usual clickbait thing, they have crafted a headline to mislead the public, knowing that the vast majority of people are not actually going to be able to read it. The Rolling Stone reported that Gosser floated the possibility of a, quote, blanket pardon that could be available to those planning the protest, with one of the two sources saying, our impression was that it was a done deal, that he'd spoken to the president about it in the Oval, in a meeting about pardons that our names, again, this is the people organizing the protest, came up, that they were working on submitting the paperwork and getting members of the House Freedom Caucus to sign as a show of support. The source added, the source said Gosser offered several assurances about the pardons. So before I actually get into the content of this particular report, I want to point something out to you. You know that they just say the source? The reason is because the source of this news story are two anonymous sources. These are people that claim to be protest organizers. And maybe they actually are, we don't know. But the point is, they refuse to give their names or identify themselves in any way other than just saying that they were sourced. So we've got two anonymous sources making these allegations, which should be a pretty strong red flag right off the bat. That doesn't mean that anonymous source stories are always wrong, but we're going to need more to go on to actually believe that the stuff in the story is real. Now, this can be a good catalyst to find out if what they are saying is true, and hopefully the facts on that will come out from a non-anonymous source. But as long as anonymous sources are all that you're basing it off of, I'm going to need more than that. I'm sorry. I don't trust that the people that are not even willing to give their own names to blow the, the whistle off this thing, to, to blow this story up, are actually who they claim they are unless I see who it actually is. And so, already... You see a massive reason not to believe what the story is saying. But even if what the sources are saying is actually true, you have to remember that these are protest organizers, not people that actually stormed the Capitol. And so it's talking about two completely different things. So if I, as a congressperson, and I'm not saying that this would be the right thing to do, but if I, as a congressperson, said to you, a protester, look, anything that's going to happen, we're going to give you a blanket pardon for that. Okay, that's still pretty bad. But that is not an indication that they knew that they were going to be engaged in illegal activity. And if you were planning an actual insurrection where you take over the government, which is what was being alleged by people on the left and in this article, why would you need the pardon? Seriously, if you're just going to take over the government and Trump's going to be dictator from now to the end of time, the pardon's completely unnecessary. The winning side doesn't need a pardon in, a res in, in, in an insurrection. You understand that, right? And so that's what's so funny about this whole thing, is that even if every single word of this story is true, it still amounts to absolutely nothing. No illegal activity. You know, not good stuff, necessarily. But not necessarily something that you could, because that doesn't mean that you know for a fact they're going to commit illegal activity. And another thing, too, this happened not with the entire list of Congress people they claimed they were planning this with. They only claimed that Gosner was the only person that actually said this. And they also say that they got the impression that that is what had happened that President Trump had been contacted about this and he was going to give them a blanket pardon for anything they might do in the protest. You'll notice that even those sources did not say that he absolutely did this. They said that th that was the impression that they got. That's it. And so you've got two anonymous sources saying that they perceived something in a certain way. Therefore, it must be that the whole January 6th thing was planned. And again, these are people that were organizing the protest, not breaking into the Capitol in the first place. It's rare that you see a news story with so little to go on as this one. And maybe this is an indication of why Rolling Stone should keep to interviewing, you know, rock stars and people like that and not actually pretending to be a journalistic organization. But furthermore, 
Um, even if this were true, Mo Brooks is not in trouble because Gossner is the only one that is even alleged to do something kind of shady. I don't even think that that would actually be illegal. But Mo Brooks isn't even being accused of that. And yet Rolling Stone and some of our local media decided to go after him. So let's go ahead and look at the follow-up to this article that Rolling Stone put out. This is the headline that they specifically singled out Mo Brooks. They said Representative Mo Brooks admits staff may have helped plan January 6 events and said that he'd be proud of them if they did. Again, this is a headline that is crafted to look really terrible, but when you actually know what's in the story and know what's in the previous story that they wrote about this, you know that it doesn't prove a thing. Because when it says events on January 6th, you'll notice they didn't say the rally or the protest. They said events. In other words, they kept it intentionally vague to try to make the reader think when he saw it that what was actually being discussed here is Mo Brooks is saying, oh yeah, I would be proud if some of my people were involved in the planning of people breaking into the Capitol. That's what they're hoping that the reader is dumb enough to think just by seeing that headline and not actually read the content of the article. And, and frankly, the second follow-up article is actually worse and built on even less than the first one is. So this is AL.com who records what Mo Brooks actually said versus what the headline there alleges. And even though I'm pretty harsh on AL.com on a fairly regular basis, props to them for at least including Mo Brooks' actual statement in their news story. And this is Mo Brooks talking. I had no intentions of going to that rally until January 5th when the White House asked me to speak, Brooks said, adding that the date marked the beginning of his involvement in the rally. So in other words, Mo Brooks hadn't even been involved in this thing for 24 hours when he got the call and they asked him to be involved. The congressman said he could not say whether his staff interacted with the two anonymous Rolling Stone sources only identified as an organizer and a planner of the January 6th rally and other protests because he had not spoken to them about it. So in other words, what he's saying here is he was only involved here for a day and they ask him, well, were you involved in the people that were interviewed by Rolling Stone? And he said, well, I don't know because they're anonymous sources. Um, well, yeah, that's exactly what should have been said because they're an anonymous source. So he can't possibly know whether or not he talked to the, his staff talked to them or not. And then Mo Brooks continues on in his quote here. Quite frankly, I'd be proud of them if they did help organize a First Amendment rally to protest voter fraud and election theft, Brooks said of his staff. So again, it's very clear in that statement that what Mo Brooks is talking about is not people breaking into the Capitol. He's specifically talking about the rally that he was involved in, the one that happened about a 20-minute walk away from where the Capitol was being broken into while Trump was speaking again, I might add. He's saying that he'd be proud of his staff helping organize the rally that was there to protest voter fraud. He's not saying anything about people breaking into the Capitol or that he would be proud of his staff for helping organize that because that's not what he was talking about. But Rolling Stone is trying to drum up this idea that that's exactly what he meant with this fake news headline. If you want a, a, like a, a classic textbook case of face news, uh, fake news, this is exactly it. And they even say in the same article um, that Mo Brooks, well, he, he said that it's possible that his staff could have been involved in the planning. He's saying that he can't identify these two people because they don't have names, you knucklehead. That would be like coming up to me and saying, uh, hey, Caleb, did any of your students there at Faulkner, have they ever talked to this person? I don't know. What's that person's name? Well, we don't know what the name is. Well, then how am I supposed to know whether or not the student talked to him or not, genius? That's what's going on here with Mo Brooks. They're saying, did any of your staff talk to these people? And Mo Brooks is saying, I, I don't know who these people are. So I couldn't possibly tell you if some random person on my staff talked to them. And yet in the Rolling Stone article that was a reaction to that statement, they try to say, well, he's saying that it's possible that he helped in the planning. His, his staff didn't know about it until the day of because he didn't even know about it until the day before it happened. And so they're trying so hard to pin Mo Brooks to this and saying that, you know, Trump and Mo Brooks and all these people planned the breaking into the Capitol, but it's just based on absolutely nothing. And one final thing that I'll show you here too. This was also, I thought, pretty funny. 
this was Rolling Stone again trying to smear Mo Brooks in that follow-up article. Here, Rolling Stone actually said, Brooks, quote, for some strange reason from that article, reportedly wore body armor while he spoke at the rally at Ellipse preceding the riot at the Capitol. There's also that. And you can tell by the language here that the author has a disdain for him and he's trying to suggest, ah, see, Mo Brooks knew something was going to happen because he wore body armor. You do know that Mo Brooks is a congressperson, right? Speaking at an open event where there could be snipers hiding anywhere. It is not at all uncommon for congresspeople when they do speeches like this or really public appearances of any kind to wear body armor. It might also be pertinent for this idiot writing for Rolling Stone to note that Mo Brooks has also been shot at. You remember a few years ago when there was the shooting that happened at the softball stadium? That wasn't even a public event. That was just some random nut job with a rifle that tried to kill a bunch of senators and congressmen. And remember that Mo Brooks was right there with Representative Steve Scalise and probably saved his life just because he happened to be nearby and used his own belt as a tourniquet to, to stop the bleeding. And so not only do you have the fact that this is a very common practice by public officials and famous people when they do speaking events, especially if you're a congressperson and people might want to assassinate you, but on top of that, Mo Brooks is a person that has actually survived a shooting at an event that wasn't even public. And we're supposed to act like, oh, well, he was wearing body armor. He must have known there were going to be some riots breaking out. This person's an idiot. They're trying so hard to connect this to the Republicans or try to make it that it was planned. They're grasping at straws and they will take literally anything. You can see anything that they think might be kind of construed. They just salivate over it. And it's so funny because the language in that quote, you can even tell that the guy's got nothing. He's like, well, he also, for some strange reason, wore body armor. So yeah, there's that. So what? If you have, if you did your job and actually knew that this was a very common thing that Congress people do, and also that Mo Brooks specifically has been somebody that has been through an event like this, you might understand a little more why he wears body armor pretty much all the time. I've actually seen Mo Brooks at events where I knew he was wearing body armor. Not that he and I are all that close, but I've seen him at public events where I could tell he was wearing body armor. So it's not like this is the only time where that happened. And this guy trying to allege that that means that Mo Brooks knew something and was preparing for something, that person's just a moron. There's really no kinder way to say that. That would be like saying, oh yeah, see that see that congressperson? He's putting on a seatbelt. He must be going out there, planning on wrecking his car and driving it into somebody. Or, you know, in this case, it would be more appropriate to say uh, after the car wreck happened. Ah, see, see, this person, they, uh, they were wearing their seatbelt, so obviously they were intending to drive their car into that pole. No, it's a safety precaution. It's not bizarre or strange or an indication that they knew something ahead of time to see somebody wearing a seatbelt. That's just ridiculous. And you see junk like this, which is, like I said, just the epitome of fake news. And yet somehow the media still can't figure out how it is that nobody trusts them. It shall forever be a mystery. I wonder why. When you try to make stories up out of nothing because it fits a political narrative and it's blatantly obvious you had nothing to go on but ran with it anyway, that's what fake news is, people. And I'm someone that just doesn't throw that phrase around like a lot of people on my side of the aisle do. Like Trump did for a lot of things that really wasn't fake news. It was just news he didn't agree with. But when I use fake news in this context, I mean it's actually fake news. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.